Hello class, in this video I will talk about the third question in our uh, chapter 13 assignment. So in this question we want to determine uh, how many employees we need to have for each of the hours on Friday. So we are given the requirements, for example, uh, for the first hour 9 o'clock to 10 o'clock we need to have at least 6 people there. And for the next hour 10 to 11 we, have, we need to have at least four people there and so on and so forth. And our ob objective is to minimize our cost. So each employee has uh, an hourly wage. So we have two types of employees, full-time employee and uh, part-time employee. So full-time employee, uh, one, that employee will start at one of the hours and so it will work for four hour shifts, then that employee will take a break for one hour, then work another three hours. So that's uh, the, uh, how full-time employees work. And part-time employee, the part-time employee will start at one of the uh, hours and then that employee will start a four hour shift. After the shift is done, that employee will be, will be gone. So that's the requirement. Uh, for two types of employees, and we have the hourly wage, full-time employee, and uh, part-time employee. So that's that's the whole uh, data we are given here. So how to model this problem as an optimization problem? So firstly, we need to um, look at how this uh, assignment uh, mechanism works. So I put all the data uh, in the Excel. So here we have different hours. So firstly, you need to put all the all the hours here. So nine to ten, ten to eleven, eleven to noon, and so on and so forth. So from nine o'clock in the morning to seven uh, o'clock in the uh, in the afternoon. So then let's talk about the full time employee first. Let me uh, use red to denote the full time employee. So let's assume uh, we have a full time employee who will start at nine o'clock. Then let's see uh, what, which uh, time slots that employee will cover. So of course, if that person starts at 8, eight o'clock, that employee will uh, work on this first time slot, second, third, and fourth. Then followed by a break. So that full-time employee will not uh, work between 1 o'clock and 2 o'clock. So after the one hour break, so that person will uh, continue to work for three hours. So he or she will cover this hour, that hour, and four to five p.m. And then that person will be gone. So if we have uh, another employee, say, uh, starts at 10 o'clock, so that person will start at here. So it, that person will cover the first uh, this hour, second hour, third hour, fourth hour. So then followed by a break, and then after he come or she comes back, uh, that person will start uh, the rest of the three hours. And someone can start at 11 o'clock, so cover the first four hours, followed by a break, and then the rest of the three hours. Do we need to have someone to start at noon? Probably not. So if someone starts at noon, so we because the bank will close at four, uh, sorry, seven o'clock. So we will waste uh, one hour. So but because full time employee, we have to pay them the, the the whole day wage. So we are not going to do that. If we need someone here, probably we can use like uh, other uh, uh, part time employee to cover this uh, time slot. So that's a full-time employee. And for the part-time employee, we do the same. So someone can start at 9 o'clock, so 4 hours. If someone starts at 10 o'clock, those 4 hours. And then 11 o'clock, noon, 1, 2, and 3. Okay. So that's, that's the data we have. Okay. So then we have the demand. So for this hour, we need at least six people there. For the second time slot, we need at least four there. Okay. 
So one means that person covers the, the first time slot. Uh, the one means it will cover this slot. So that's the, the whole mechanism, uh, how, how this uh, assignment uh, problem uh, works. Then let's do this modeling. So we have two types of employees. Let's, ask, let's use XI to denote the number of full-time employees who will start at uh, I o'clock. I could be 9 in the morning, 10 and 11. Then let's use YJ to denote number of part employees who can start at 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, noon, 1, 2 and 3. So those are our design variables. Then our objective function is to minimize our cost. So here 105, if we go back, 105 is the uh, so daily wage. So we have to pay a daily wage for a full-time employee. So that means uh, for the number of full-time em employees who start at 9, 9 o'clock, we pay 105. So same thing for the full-time employees start at uh, 10 o'clock and 11 o'clock. So those are the wages we have to pay uh, to the full-time employees. And part-time employees, so the daily wage is uh, $30, $32. So we do the same to formulate our objective function. Then for the constraints, then let's talk about, let's look at each of the time slots. So let's talk about the, the 9 to 10 in the morning slot. So if we look at the Excel again, so the full-time employee who starts at 9 o'clock and the part-time employee who starts at 9 o'clock can cover that time slot. So that means, so x9 plus y9 has to be greater than or equal to 6. At least 6 people have to be here. So that's uh, about... So this is about, uh, let me put it here, uh, so 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. slot, okay? And the second one, so this is the 10 to uh, 11. So if someone starts at, I mean, so, uh, if one full-time employee uh, starts at 9 o'clock, so that person can cover this uh, time slot as well. And someone who starts at 10 o'clock can also cover this slot. So full-time employees, part-time employees. And follow the same way we do the third time slot, 11 to noon. So we have three types of full-time full -time employees can cover this slot and three types of uh, part-time employees can cover this slot and the next one and the next one here we notice that there is no x9 because the, the full-time employees who start at 9 are taking a break for this hour okay then we follow the same way to finish all the constraints and do not forget the non-negativity constraint in our integer requirement so that's how we that's how we do this modeling.